been like a huge journey for us and we learned a lot. We went through these five incredible days and uh, I think I was really excited to, uh, on the first day and now I'm very calm. Yeah. Yeah, and we want to probably just uh, do our job the best we can. Yes. Uh, we want to give the best performance possible and uh, really show the audience how much we appreciate the music and the journey we've been a part of uh, in the last week. Yeah. Together with uh, Steve Reich. We are classical pianists, you know? So for, for us it was just an eye-opening experience. Yes, it's definitely something outside of our comfort zone. It's yeah. this kind of contemporary project when uh, we are, first of all, not in a concert hall. We are a music installation. Uh, we are we wearing amazing clothes, um, some accessories, yeah. uh, which is something we Quite. don't normally do, right? We don't do it every day and it's not very common in the classical music world. Uh, I think this is definitely a first experience of that sort for me and I think uh, for you as well, Monica. festival, piano festival in Konas, Konas Piano Fest, as a participant and we met there and then uh, somehow we decided to visit this museum last year uh, during uh, one uh, exhibition. I think it was uh, why it is so hard to love, something like that. Yeah, I, I can't that remember was, uh, the exact... It was uh, the exhibition about love, that's true. Uh, and uh, we were just walking and Anna said, you know Monica, what would be cool to play here Steve Reich? And I was like, yeah, why not? I didn't really know the piece. I just said like, <laughs> it's fine, we're gonna do this, <laughs> you know? Great idea. Great idea, so... And, uh, you know, she said the idea and uh, I kind of fulfilled it. <laughs> so mm -hmm. That's how it was and yeah. uh, I think it was an amazing journey and I think Monica really made this, you really made this happen because oh, it's, it's li in Lithuania and I love Lithuania. I, I visited uh, that many times. But unfortunately, I don't speak the language, so a lot of responsibilities, organizational uh, responsibilities, uh, were on you. Um, you know, and Monica took care of the beautiful posters that we have, and, and uh, an amazing crew that is filming this documentary. And uh, I mean, honestly, it's just such a such a great job, uh, and I'm just privileged uh, to be here. This first of all. We all know that it's COVID, right? <laughs> so we couldn't uh, really meet. Our plan was uh, actually Steve Reich uh, in the score. He indicates that the uh, performers uh, must rehearse in a long period of time. It several can, weeks. Several weeks. And now we know why. Because it's not so much, so much material to play. It's not really difficult. But to get this sense of uh, process and this long phasing. It just, it feels like you could, you know, study this forever. And I think this is why he wanted that people would, uh, you know, rehearse long and they would feel it, they would kind of memorize the music. And uh, we didn't have this privilege. We just came here three days ago. And until last minute, we actually didn't know that the project would be happening. Yes. Because uh, Monica lives currently in Vienna, I live in London, uh, the restrictions are very heavy. So, uh, I mean, for you, I think it's easier for me. Now I come back to London and it means quarantine. Quarantine, lots of tests, and of course I will pay the uh, kind of price <laughs> for coming and traveling uh, in these difficult times. But until the last moment, it was kind of, is it, is it possible? Can we, how can we do it? Uh, and we are so uh, happy that it happened and we want to take this project further. Mm -hmm. This is just the beginning for us. Um, yeah, so the difficulties were yeah. there. It's funny how you play and how many philosophical ideas appear in your head. And it has been really interesting to see how people react to this music. And uh, I personally had... Uh, I was scared a little bit. I was like, 
I didn't really know if people will, how will they react? Maybe it's a little bit boring, maybe it's a little bit uh, disturbing, I don't know. But uh, I think I was so wrong. <laughs> I was just so wrong because people love it. They, they just, they go into certain uh, meditation mode and they really forget everything for, for those 20 minutes. You can see them uh, closing their eyes, moving with the music, yeah. being with the music. As you say, I think I imagine that people will be leaving more often. I thought people will yeah. come, listen for two minutes. Okay, well, it's repetitive. <laughs> so, okay, I've seen my two minutes, I can move <laughs> on. But this actually happened very rarely that someone would come for two minutes and leave. People usually stay for the whole performance. They just can't uh, stop listening yes. to it. So it means that the, um, the music has this connection yes. with the audience. So we, we uh, both came to Kovinos uh, <laughs> without any clothes. <laughs> yeah, I remember I asked Anna, did you bring any concert clothes? Because you know normally, what do you do in the classical music world? You have your dress, flowery dress, whatever dress, and you go and you play. And with this project, I was like, what should I wear? I'm going to be in a museum. In the museum, we are now here. And I just didn't know mm. what would match. And you know, we didn't have any idea. I was thinking of uh, getting leggings <laughs> and a black shirt that I sleep in. And I thought maybe like this, uh, you know, it will look minimalistic and it will match the music. Uh, but then uh, Joza Statkevich, uh, he kindly styled us yes. uh, for the concerts and it was an amazing experience actually. He was so kind and he uh, immediately had an idea how to do it. He saw us and said, that's how it needs to be. Yeah. Uh, these trousers, these shoes, these shirts, this accessory, that kind of makeup, you have to look natural, uh, nude makeup, almost no, uh, almost nothing on the face. Uh, so we look very similar. Like twins, you like said? Twins. Yeah, you use the word twins a lot. Since that meeting with Yuazas, it suddenly changed everything for us, you know? It, 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 when we came here in Lithuania, we were just doing, uh, I don't know, nine performances, nine concerts. And after meeting Yuazas, it was that we are no longer doing concerts. This is something bigger than a simple concert. It was like a piece of art because suddenly these clothes made us to be uh, part of a bigger thing. We are no longer just performers. We are part of this architecture. We are part of uh, this installation mm -hmm. and that people actually see us as a part of uh, exhibition. So I think this was, mm -hmm. it's, it's funny to think how visuals, in this case clothing, can actually influence the performance in general. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, at least I felt like that. When no, totally. Um, yeah, it's changed uh, our performance and our feeling, how we look like, how people perceive us. And it is kind of nice because for the first time in my life, I felt that it's not about me. Yeah. It's about the music, it's about the installation, it's, it's about the audience in the space. And um, we watched uh, uh, this documentary about uh, Steve Reich. Um, and actually he said exactly the same thing, that there is this inevitable uh, connection between music and the audience. If the music doesn't connect with the audience, if it doesn't um, make people emotional in a way, it's, it's kind of meaningless. Yes, yes. Once you are not the phasing pianist, because the phasing pianist is always under a lot of stress, and you're like, ah, oh, if I catch this phase, oh my god, oh my god. Maybe you know. just to explain um, a little bit about the piece yes, before yes. we say about the phasing, um, the idea of the piano phase, as the piece is called, uh, is that both pianists play the same pattern. Uh, they repeat the pattern uh, multiple times, <clears throat> and um, at some point one of the pianists starts uh, slowly accelerating, so slowly getting faster, until the moment that um, the pianist who is accelerating is one note ahead of the uh, pianist who is keeping the same speed. So for some time you are what uh, is called in the phase, you are phasing, so you are not together, and then you catch the moment when uh, you're one note apart and then the pattern changes. 
So on the way here, we were listening to a documentary about uh, Raish and, and his ideas, and uh, I think someone suggested to him to go to listen to this preacher in the street uh, because he had a very sp um, special way of preaching. It was like uh, talk, uh, talking related with singing, and then there is like mm -hmm. the tape. They show it; uh, you can you can hear it. And then during uh, during that uh, uh, talking, there was a pigeon who was doing uh, like uh, just flying. Some kind of and then uh, Raish he recorded those two uh, bits, and uh, the pigeon became like a, a drum. Like yeah. it, he said, like something like a percussion. And then uh, you know there was uh, a preacher. And then he put it together and accidentally, I think he said accidentally, yeah. he pressed uh, start on both tapes. And then it kind of uh, got uh, desynchronized and then he came up with this idea. So, so the he, pigeon started phasing. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And uh, he, he himself said, like, some people say that you were, you were given a gift from a god. Some people say that this is just an accident. But... But, uh, I mean, here we are, we have it, and we are doing this uh, amazing project because yeah. of this. We can call it an accident, you know? Yeah, and this uh, preacher's voice and the pigeon's sounds became the piano phase. The piano phase, yeah. And but because I think he, what he said, that he, f he felt that he doesn't want to work all his life with tapes. Mm -hmm. You know, he wants to include people. And, and then I think uh, why this piece is also so, spe so special for us that it, it makes you create a relationship with the audience, which very often classical music, at least I sometimes feel that I am very isolated from, from the audience because, you know, the audience come, they sit in front of you, you are alone in the space, you are like, everyone is staring at you, and then here you go play, you know? And then here we said, no, we are not gonna do this. We also put a sign which says like, please move around the hall freely that people can actually just go around, see see the score, look at us. Talk to us. Talk to us, you know, and we we welcome all sounds surround, like surrounding us. Children, great. If someone decides to leave and they are walking and you hear the feet sound, also great. And uh, I think this, this made us uh, feel very differently. And I think for, for us, it was a huge revel revelation as a, as for artists, because I feel like we are feeling a little bit uh, freer after this, and uh, and inspired, inspired to do yes. similar things. And uh, I personally found a lot of meaning, a lot of meaning, yes, uh, especially in the educational part of it. So, uh, one day we had a big group of uh, children coming to our performance in the morning, uh, at noon, <laughs> at noon, yes, <laughs> between morning and afternoon. Um, and uh, at the beginning I thought, well, children, they will probably not enjoy it, uh, maybe they will be bored, uh, but no, they were so interested, they were coming to the pianos, they wanted to look at it, they, they stayed for the whole performance, and um, after the performance we uh, usually ask the uh, audience members to fill in a questionnaire, um, and in this questionnaire we ask about um, how valuable they find uh, art, uh, how valuable they find uh, this kind of performance, if they are likely to attend in the future. And I thought, oh, I should give these questionnaires to adults only. And then I thought, wait a second. Why only adults? These children, they can read, they can write, they, can, they have opinion. Soon they will be the main audience, you know, 10 years from now, they will become adults and they will make these decisions. Do I want to go to a contemporary arts museum? Do I want to go and hear some live music? And it is so important and I found a very deep meaning in this, which I never thought I would find. Because when I was uh, maybe 10 years ago, I would think this is, oh, these people who work with children, Mm -hmm. This is yes. not important. And now I think this is the most important. Yes. This uh, um, uh, feeling of empowerment that you are, you are the creator. You can influence the way the hall looks like, the way people move around the hall. And I, I think it was just... I felt great that I don't have to be in a certain way, I don't have to act in a certain way. So during this whole process we also decided to do a little vlog 
in a way to see you know how we developed what we've learned and i remember we were we were also talking about that if we would wear these clothes in a, in a traditional classical uh, music concert people would be like what are you wearing you know like why and then suddenly here it would be not normal not to wear it you know mm -hmm. so i think for us it was just this freedom that we can just put the chair in the middle and it's fine and it's one chair and someone sits in the middle and it's fine and for example one one performance we had only one person who came and she, uh, there was a woman and she Very came committed she came earlier yeah, she, she came. was waiting for the performance and she was this yes uh, and she came and then holder. you know in the normal setting you would think oh my god i had only one person listening to me oh, i'm probably a failure whatever but <laughs> In this case, you know, in this case, yeah. it was just like what you said in the museum, not all the time people look at the picture. Mm -hmm. Sometimes picture is just alone, you know, and sometimes we are alone here and it's fine. Mm -hmm. I think it has, it, it has something to do maybe with the performer's ego because, you know, everything what we've learned until this project, <laughs> everything what we learned until this project was about me, 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 and just me. And then suddenly, me kind of disappeared. Beautiful set. <laughs> yes. What happened that we, uh, we caught the idea of what he wanted, and not musically, not music. I don't talk about music. I, I talk about philosophical part of this piece because what Anna says, I think the conversations which we were having is most of the time about meaning of life because this piece is a little bit about that. It's, uh, you know, you have these uh, stable moments and then you have this uh, moment where are you completely in, in, in clash with everything, you know? Everything is not together. There's no, it's not stable. You feel like, oh my God, where am I? Like, like floating. Phasing. Yeah, like basically <laughs> phasing. And, uh, but the, the, the whole piece is like a journey. And then for us, we notice that it's just so difficult to be in the discomfort because once you are uh, together in the unison or you already catch the right phase, you're fine. You're stable, you know where you are, everything is okay. But this moment where you travel to the phase, where you are, completely lost and you don't really know where are you and this discomfort you just can't stay in it and i think for us it was just this understanding that it's, it's this piece is almost like about life that we are trying to always of course we look for challenges but somehow we always try to stay in the comfort zone we, you know we look uh, for these kind of anchors in our lives and uh, he was talking about the journey the journey and being in the process and I think for us, we were just constantly talking about that and talking about that, and it was mm -hmm. really uh, all eye-opening. That's true. And I think people are very interested in it. We had uh, some people coming uh, from the audience and they want to talk to us. They want to know exactly what is happening with the piece. They want to look at the music. They are reading the um, composer's guidelines, which we uh, put here around the hall. Um, and they really, they are really interested. They want to, they want to know what is happening, and they want to explore more. So, um, I think it's not true that people are not, not interested, curious, not yes. curious in this process, in this arts. We just have to find a way to bring it to them. And yes. the realities are changing very quickly, especially nowadays with the pandemic on the way. Yeah, I think things will change in the future. They are already changing. Mm. Yeah. Like basically the whole piece was like a huge phase. <laughs> yeah. One big phase. This moment when you can't say mm -hmm. if you're together or you're phasing. Yes. This is like the scariest <laughs> moment. The scariest moment. I can't hear it. Am I phasing? Are you phasing? Yes. So I think it was just a, it's a it was like a shock for us. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then, a trauma. A trauma, yes. And then we, we thought like, oh my god, like, it looks like we will not be able to do it. It's literally, and we were like, 
So none of us face perfectly and uh, none of us face horribly. Yeah. So we just decided to flip a coin. Who is going to be the first? So Anna always faces uh, at 12 o'clock and I face at uh, 6, six o'clock. Uh -huh. And uh, on that day we both face quite bad. Yeah. <laughs> but then we close the pianos and it suddenly changed everything. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, another a les lesson for us that basically environment changes everything. The way you perceive music, mm -hmm and the way you imagine the project. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah.